saw this. Canadian province experiments with decriminalizing hard drugs. Yeah, I have seen that. That's British Columbia. Yeah, yeah so fentanyl. up to 2.5 grams of such drugs, as well as methamphetamine, fentanyl, and morphine. Canadian Canada's uh, federal government granted the request by the West Coast province to try out the three-year experiment. Well, the state of Oregon decriminalized everything. Like, you can get steroids, mushrooms... Yeah. LSD, everything's decriminalized. I think that's the right thing to do. I think I it's do. the right thing to do, too. It's just trying to sell that to people that are terrified of their children doing drugs is what's weird about it. Like, the idea that a grown adult should be prohibited from using something that other grown adults disagree with is ridiculous. Yeah. As long as you can drink alcohol and take prescription medication that can kill you, like, why are we telling people what they can and can't do with their body? Yeah, I mean, especially when there's evidence when well, things like marijuana, for example, mm -hmm. or psilocybin, mm -hmm. which has tremendous therapeutic benefits to people with PTSD, soldiers, people that are dying that, you know, the, like end of life anxiety. And yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm sure you've seen the numbers on fentanyl deaths. It's like yes. we have 100,000 overdoses a year now. Yeah, I think even one year it was maybe 110,000. And what's interesting about that is. The only reason that's happening is because we did that crackdown on the pain pills because about 30,000 people were dying every year from the pain pills. And so they said, oh, my God, this is a crisis. We got to stop it. So they cracked down on those pain pills. Doctors were, are, are less able to prescribe that. And then those people who were on the pills decided, now I got to go to the black market and get heroin. And some of that heroin is laced with fentanyl. And that's what's leading to people dying. So you take this thing where people mean well. It's like they want, oh, I want to help the addicts. We got to get them off this stuff. Let's ban it. Let's crack down. But the unintended consequence of that was now fentanyl is the killer, and it's an even worse killer. Yeah. And so generally what happens is when you do, when you legalize, tax, and regulate, or at the very least decriminalize, it's just healthier for everybody all around. You know, yeah. you can have better standards, better guidelines. I mean, we've talked about this before, but during Prohibition, you had people dying from a bad batch of alcohol. Yeah. Why? Because it was illegal, and somebody was making it in their fucking bathtub and cutting it with some shit that could kill you. Right, which is what we're having right now. That's it's right. brought in by the cartels. That's exactly right. And That's then, the issue with that fentanyl. So then we're propping up this incredible illegal business in Mexico, which is, you know, getting them immense power and then you're seeing these wars that are going on with the cartels in Mexico. It's That's right. Crazy. I saw your podcast with uh, Peter Zihan where he was talking about um, how actually if you look at El Chapo he had consolidated power and he was the leader and then we did this what's called the decapitation strategy you take out the leader and then the thought is oh maybe the rest of the organization will crumble but what happened is you took out the leader and then you had people warring in the streets to determine who the next leader was going to be. Of course. And so it got way worse. Yeah. So, I mean, look, the answer is legalize, tax, and regulate. Put all the cartels out of business if you do that, right? Yeah. Just put them out of business. Make it so that, you know, uh, it's all official, reputable companies that if there's a problem, you go to court and settle it. You don't have a shootout in the street. Yeah, but, I mean, making cocaine legal in this country would be a huge leap. It would be a really scary thing. A politician would it would be suicidal to say cocaine should be legal. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> How many kids are dying from drug overdoses? And Yeah, I mean, look, it's a crisis of imagination, right? Because there was a time when, like, everything was legal. Like, the first drug laws came late in our history. Well, and then now we think of it as, like, well, duh, we have the drug laws. But it's not a duh. The big Schedule One drug push was in 1970, and that was a response to the psychedelic movement in the 1960s. Did you ever see that quote from one of Nixon's top officials who said the reason why they did the drug war. They said, look, we had we had enemies in our White House, and our enemies were hippie white people and black people. They yeah. were never going to vote for us. So what yeah. do we do? Well, you crack down on what you think is their lifestyle. Yes. So you criminalize the psychedelic drugs, you, you criminalize the, the marijuana, the mm -hmm. crack cocaine, and that's how we solved our political problem, is we, we locked these people up, basically. The guy yeah. admitted it. It was yeah. out in the open. Yeah, it's real obvious what happened. And the consequences are horrible. You know, it's like the same consequences during Prohibition is exactly what we're experiencing now. It's just not organized crime in America. It's more organized crime in Mexico. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And But people don't want to see that. It's too complex and nuanced an issue for people to say, we're going to legalize all drugs. People would go crazy. Like, drugs are bad. Yeah, but I mean... I think a lot of it hinges on that regulation part because it's legalize, tax, and regulate. And if you regulate it effectively, what you're doing is you're taking like a safer version of all the different drugs and allowing it on the market. Like, I'm not saying you should be able to go to the store and get, you know, fucking crystal meth or crocodile 
right? These are drugs that by their very nature, the way they're made, like you could rot your teeth out of your mouth with crystal yeah. meth or you take crocodile, which is like poor man's heroin and your fucking flesh rots off. We've seen yeah. those harsh. Or bath salts. People are fucking eating people's faces on bath salts. We're not saying legalize that stuff. We're saying legalize tax and regulate drugs so you create kind of like a safe alternative that still gives a semblance of that particular high, whether it's an upper or downer or hallucinogenic or whatever. Yeah. And then you have a more safer situation. I mean, look, there's evidence that these, these safe injection sites, right? People look at that and they go, oh my God, you're incentivizing people to go take fucking heroin. This is crazy. Like, what's wrong with you? The reality is when you have safe injection sites, you have experts there. So nobody's going to, you're not going to pass herpes around or pass diseases around. Nobody's going to overdose because they took a bad batch. You just have professionals there who say, hey, we can save you if something bad happens. And they could test the drugs to make sure they're not fucking tainted. So really all those things do is make it safer for people. But just the optics of that are like, oh, <laughs> like it right. seems like you're incentivizing going to take heroin. Yeah, and the places that have done that, like Oregon, are a fucking holy mess. That's that's also part of the problem with decriminalization. My understanding was that, so they did it in New York City. I don't know if they're still doing it, but like on the first day, they saved like a dozen people's lives. Mm. You know, and then I think in Portugal, they've experimented with stuff like this and they've had some positive results. So, I mean, it's tricky, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, Portugal's done a great job of decriminalizing things. I'm on the side of leaning as much as you can towards freedom, but being intelligent with the regulations. Yeah. That's my instinct, usually. Well, when you talk to guys like uh, Dr. Carl Hart, have you ever seen... I have. I've interviewed him. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. And mm -hmm. his perspective is that we have a very distorted perception of what the dangers of a lot of these drugs are in the it's first true. place. Yeah. And that we have demonized a lot of these things. And, and, you know, when he first started studying drugs, he was a clinical researcher. He was like a straightforward scientist teetotaler wasn't doing anything and then he was realizing this is all bullshit and started experimenting personally with these different drugs and like there's some great benefits to that if used responsibly which he does he did recreational heroin he said that was my favorite still one does yeah still does and openly talks about it and he he he, he keeps his job he does phenomenal writing he, and look i the fact of the matter is i think most people who are drug users actually fall in that category. I think these stats come right out of his book. Like 80% of people who, are, who do any drug, it's kind of like a recreational thing where they can yes. do it. And they can, there are a lot of other factors that are in play where, you know, people are dealing, dealing with severe mental illness or extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. You mix those things with somebody who's addicted to drugs and it's going to get ugly. Right. You know, somebody's going to be homeless. For yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah.